Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. We thank you for what we have learned from the beginning until this time. Lord, we pray that you will prepare us for the days ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. The ministry is stretched before us. And the great things will stretch before us that we are going to do. Lord, we pray you will use us to accomplish them in Jesus' name. Amen. We are asking, O oh Lord, that as we learn, we we'll retain what we learn. We we'll live according to what we are learning. We act on what we are learning. And this glorious ministry you are placing our hand will not fail in Jesus' name. Speak to our hearts right now. In Jesus' name we pray. In Psalm 16, I'm reading from verses 5 all through to 8. We're talking about receiving our inheritance through faith. The inheritance the Lord has given us as children of God, as servants of the Most High, as ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It gives us a calling. It gives us an opportunity to serve in times like this. Not to leave that, you know, he equips us. He gives us all that we need. And he tells us what our resources are. What our gifts are. What the possibilities are. What the inheritance is. And without all these treasures and gifts and talents and abilities and all the things he provides, we will not be able to do or accomplish everything we need to do and accomplish. That's the reason why he's talking to us today on receiving and possessing our inheritance and the way to do that to receive it to have it to possess it and to retain it not only to have not only to possess but to retain that inheritance and we do that by faith through faith as you look at Psalm 16 verse 5 it says the Lord is the portion of my of my inheritance and of my car thou maintainest my Lord the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places yea I have a goodly heritage I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel my reins also instruct me in the night seasons I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I shall not be moved you will not be moved if you look at those verses you have read it talks about my portion the portion of my inheritance it talks about my cup it talks about my Lord. It talks about the lines falling unto me. That is the provision of the Lord all lined up and it falls on my side. And it says, in a goodly heritage. Then it says, because of this inheritance and because of this possibility and because of all this provision, it says, there's just something for me to do. I will bless, I will praise the Lord who has given me counsel. It says, he even gives me counsel. He tells me, this is the work to do. This is the portion of your inheritance. This is the fullness of your call. And this is the provision that I've given unto you. And then he gives me counsel now as well to make use of them. When God sends us out anywhere, he doesn't abandon us to do that work in our own strength. In our own wisdom, it keeps on instructing us and counseling us and comforting us and guiding us and directing us as to how and as to what we ought to do. And then it says, my reins also instruct me, my mind, everything within me, all my thoughts, they counsel me also and instruct me in the night seasons. 
You know, there are ministers, uh, supposed uh, ministers and preachers and pastors and leaders and bishops or whatever that in the night they just sleep. There's no instruction. But if you are a real minister of the Lord, everything you heard during the day, as you go to sleep, before you sleep, you meditate in the night on everything that you have heard. And you say, here is what the Lord has revealed. Here is what he's saying to do. And here are the steps I'm going to take. And then when you wake up in the morning, if you're like, you know, some of us, the very, the very thing that comes to you, the questions you have asked in the previous night and the things you are looking for in the previous night and even some verses of scripture that you said maybe you have forgotten you wake up in the morning like this and then god begins to reveal his mind unto you and his word unto you because in the night you are meditating upon everything your heritage your inheritance and then he said i have said the lord before me always always every time i see the lord before me because i said the lord before me and then he says because he is at my right hand i shall not be moved we're looking at psalm 73 psalm 73 we're reading from verse 23 psalm 73 verse 23 nevertheless i am continually with thee thou hast holding me by my right hand uh, when the lord calls you and is holding you every time by your right hand he holds your hand it's not revelation chapter one because we're told about the lord jesus christ the head of the church it's in the midst of the candlesticks and he's holding the stars in his hand and it says these are the ministers and these are the angels and these are the pastors and these are the leaders of the churches is holding them and because he holds them that's why you will not fall it says in verse 24 then shall they shall guide me thou shall guide me with thy counsel that is it again you know the people they, they say they are preachers they say they are leaders they say they are ministers they just walk about and here here and here and there's no guidance there's no counsel and he take decisions today and he regret that decision tomorrow and he take decisions last week the decisions of last week and the things they said of last week they're already regretting it this week why because there was no counsel i'm not talking about counsel from a pastor i'm talking about counsel from the spirit of the lord because when the comforter comes he the comforter the counselor he shall guide you into all truth but many ministers and preachers there's no counseling like that from the spirit of god what he did yesterday is what they are doing today what he did last year is what they are doing this year as to the vision as to the goal as to the direction as to the things to do as to the way a transformed way a new way and a living way to go in this direction there is no guidance at all and when you think about the people in the bible you see the guidance we're talking about the lord called moses and he said i'm going to guide you and then i'll put my word in your mouth and behold aaron is coming for you they had not seen for 40 years and the one the lord had given him to assist him he said i'm guiding him now he's going to meet you how is that when there was no communication how is that when there was no connection how is that no radio no telephone no mobile phone, nothing and at the right time in the right place here was aaron and here was moses i will guide you i will counsel you and that is how we can succeed in the work of the lord how is it that when god told peter simon peter rise and kill and eat because i've given you this and he said nothing unclean has ever entered my mouth and the lord said anything i've cleansed up don't call that common and unclean and then he said three men are seeking for you and when the challenge team the following chapter he was able to say the spirit bade me go counsel that the spirit of god comes to you and it says that's the way to go and this is what you go that is what is missing today that as it was yesterday so it is today and so it is tomorrow and so it will ever be and there's no change and there's no progress 
and there is no success it is this kind of counsel that we need today so that the new thing the lord wants us to do and the new thing he wants to accomplish they'll be done and accomplished in jesus name come back to the bible in verse 24 it says thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory it's saying that until you guide me i cannot get to glory the glory of what god wants to do the success that we're looking for and the bright uh, morning dawn that we're looking for we cannot get to that glory and that dawn except by the guidance of the lord and when the lord is guiding the leadership and is guiding the superintendent and is guiding our gs and it says this is the way to go and then there are people there they are still you know pulling the hands of the clock back and they're still acting like yesterday i don't mean real yes i mean like last year like 10 years ago and they're still their mind their brain their thoughts and their life their perspective is still like 10 years ago and we're saying it's a new dawn discipling a whole nation and there's a direction to go now and this is what to emphasize now then they're still emphasizing the other thing of the past and it says over here except he guides us by his counsel he cannot lead us to glory that glory we're going to see in jesus name it says whom have i in heaven but thee and there is none upon the earth that i deserve beside thee my flesh and my heart faileth but god is the strength of my heart tell me the rest of that verse 26 and he is my portion my inheritance my heritage forever he is my portion he'll be your portion forever i'm talking about receiving that inheritance of yours and you do that through faith number one three points we're going to look at partaking of our priestly inheritance in fellowship partaking partaking of our priestly inheritance in fellowship number two praying for our purchased inheritance with faith yes we pray but we pray with faith pray pray with faith it says praying for our purchased inheritance but with faith number three pursuing our promised inheritance without fainting pursuing 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 without fainting you know what happens to people after december retreat and after all the watch night service and after the new year covenant uh, services and then after the congress they faint they forget the things the lord starts us with and he says this is the way to go they take a few steps and then everything stops by february they're back to square one we're not going back this year we're going to keep on pursuing and pursuing until we achieve until we reach the place god wants us to reach in jesus name here comes the overseer here comes the national overseer state overseer or regional overseer or general superintendent and then we make an announcement and say this year this is the way to go and then the first Sunday will become strong and then we'll say here is what we're going to do and then then the following sunday we'll still have a little of that fire and we'll say this is the direction to go that this year is a year of outreach a year of power a year of possibilities and this year this will happen and then you know the people uh, they are you know like this and like this i say i don't know whether this is possible you know this man he doesn't understand that you know we don't have all this kind of fire and fervency and all that and then by the fourth month and then everybody now choir singers usher security and youth and children and the women the pregnant one and those who are looking for pregnancy and everybody will sit down wow and then the pastor comes back and like he preached the five years ago then he opens his bible again we have forgotten what was said in january this year we'll not forget because this year is not a year of you know fainting and fainting and then not doing what the lord has called us to do we're going to do it in jesus name because we're talking about pursuing our promised inheritance without fainting we're not going to faint and you're not kind of influence anybody to faint in jesus name number one what's number one now but taking of a priestly inheritance in fellowship we're looking at 
ourselves up as priests were priests unto the lord and as you look at first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 i'm reading there from verse 9 here is what he calls us he calls us priests unto the lord priests unto the lord he says but she a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and has called us into the light priestly people and where priests have inheritance and we're going to look at that the lord is saying that we are priests you need to understand first that we are priests and the lord jesus christ is our high priest we're looking at revelation chapter one revelation chapter one verses 5 and 6 revelation 1 5 and 6 it says and from jesus christ who is the faithful witness and the false begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. He has made us priests. You see that in verse 6. He has made us kings. He has made us priests unto God and his Father. We are priests unto the Lord. And as priests we have the priestly inheritance. Chapter 5 of Revelation. Revelation chapter 5. I'm reading there from verse 9 from verse 10 And this song, a new song This is not choir, this is everybody This is the whole congregation The people of God, the redeemed of the Lord I've been emphasizing that And you know it's getting difficult for us to see That the New Testament talks about singing Yes, and if you look at Matthew chapter 26 Don't open up And Jesus and disciples, everybody They sang, not choir If you look at, you know, Acts of the Apostles And they were told Paul and Silas Apostles and preachers, not choir the song if you look at all the psalms sing a new song unto the lord is a commandment to the whole congregation not choir and then if you look at revelation everybody now the redeemed of the lord from all the from the foundation of the world from every tribe and every nation everybody not choir everybody they sang and when we we're coming back to the bible and we say this is the word of the lord that everybody that we need to sing now and then we call the orchestra now let's fulfill the bible and play this tune for us so that the whole church can sing then you know we don't accept that we accept only the greek culture that you know raised up you know this kind of choir the greek culture that's it's not it's nothing of the bible that raised up these special people and then the entertainment industry in our world today that this is the way to do it and then the whole people they become spectators and they buy tickets they want to come and watch the artists we're bringing the world into the church we're not coming here to watch any performer we're not coming here to watch any entertainer when it talks of singing in the old testament and new testament we're talking about the people of god and they are singing we will sing a new song to the lord in jesus name give me a good amen and you know the difficulty because sometimes you exalt your wife above the bible because your wife is in the choir and then you say my wife needs that special attention your husband is in the choir and you exalt your husband above the bible and then maybe your child is in the choir and then because of that you know daddy they are doing this and they look at what and then because you exalt your son your daughter above the bible you're not accepting the word of god and it is when the whole people of god come together and they understand that in the new testament it's not about this it's not about that and it is not about attention to yourself attention to myself it's everybody coming together and they will sing praises unto the lord when we're ready we're going to do that in jesus name and when you go back to your locations every region every stage every local government every nation you want to understand that if anybody any group of people choir singer anybody will want to take away the totality of the word of god and only when they're happy is when they do what they ought to do and then you say you can see what we have done here because we're bringing the whole church 
back to the word of God. And I know some of you are there who are members of the choir from your states and all that. And I can see that, you know, some of the things you do, you are doing that because, you know, you don't believe the Bible. And because, you know, they don't give your brothers and sisters, your colleagues who are here to come and perform, to come and entertain. Because we don't do that, you know, you are causing all those. I, I see that. I, I have the spirit of God. I have the mind of Christ. I know what's happening. But we're still going to emphasize the word of God. And all of us, we're going to be united together. Amen. Give me a good amen. amen. I'm coming back to this now. I have to say that because you see, and some people say, you see now, the Bible said they sang a new song. That they there is the congregation of the people of God, all the people who are saved. And it's not quiet. Come back to chapter 5 of Revelation, verse 9. If uh, you know your GS cannot speak the Bible again, cannot bring us to the Bible again, the church is gone. And if we have to, you know, cover our mouth and moderate what we say because we're afraid of our children, the church is dead. This church will remain alive. Yeah. And we can only remain alive when we accept the word of God and when we give ourselves in submission. What's repentance? If we cannot come back to the Bible, what's righteousness? If we cannot come back to the Bible, and what is dedication to the Lord and commitment to the Lord? If we cannot come to the Bible, we're expecting that all the churches out there that we're trying to influence, we're expecting that when they come to our ministers' conferences, that when they hear the word of God, anything in their churches that is not biblical, they'll go back, they'll make a correction. If we expect the churches we influence and the churches will teach to go back to their churches and make correction when we discover something in the word of god in our own church and we cannot make correction how you see that we are saying do as we say but not do as we do we're not going to be like pharisees we're going to be like the people that are serious with the word of god in jesus name we're coming back to revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and the song a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal there the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation all unto god all these people singing here they came from all the nations and the people and the tongue and the kindred and it says and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign and it says where on the earth that's not quiet that's everybody everybody belonging to the lord the people of god the congregation of the lord and we shall reign on the earth now because we are priests unto the lord and because he has made us kings and priests unto the lord he says now we have an inheritance let me show you that as you are children of god and the people of god we have inheritance and that inheritance will not miss us in jesus name do not miss us and we will not miss it or also in jesus name we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 10 deuteronomy chapter 10 i'm reading there from verse 8 it's talking about the priest and it's talking it's talking about the inheritance we have and this inheritance belonging to us we're going to possess this inheritance chapter 10 verse 8 of deuteronomy at that time the lord separated the tribe of levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord and to stand before the Lord to minister unto him and to bless in his name unto this day wherefore Levi has no part nor inheritance with the with his brethren the Lord is his inheritance when you're a priest of the Lord a pastor a preacher a minister an overseer, a superintendent, a bishop, a deacon, whatever. It says the Lord is his inheritance. The Lord will be our inheritance. Everything he has belongs to us because we're his priests, we're servants. And it says he, with everything he has in heaven and on earth, becomes our inheritance. And it says according to as the Lord thy God 
as promised and that's the word of the lord and i pray that that inheritance will be real in every one of our lives in jesus name but uh, we need to understand that this is only for the priests of the lord it's only for the i mean all the believers because all the believers are priests this is only for the children of god the priest of the lord and it says that this is our inheritance it's not for the unbelievers it's not for the sinners it's not for those who have not repented it's not for those who are not living according to the word of the lord those who are backsliders in ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 from verse 5 for this you know that no monger, adulterer adulteress fornicator immoral person those who are deep into pornography and those who are spoiling defiling their lives by unclean things it says for no monger, no unclean person no covetous man who is an idolater a covetous man is like an idol worshiper he loves money more than he loves god he loves money more than he loves the souls of men he loves money more than he loves his own soul he loves money more than he loves any any good relationship and if you put relationship here and you put money here it says i choose money even if all the relationships in his life in her life they go into business i don't care all i need is money that's idolatry and then when you put god here the demand of god and the commandments of god going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature you put god and his commandment on one side you put money on the other side it says i choose money and money will be the consideration the central consideration and the focus of his life or her life that's idolatry and it says you know that no covetous man who is an idol worshiper and idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of christ and of god that means then the inheritance we're talking about is for those who are born again those who are children of god those who are priests unto the lord and those who are called sons and daughters of the lord in verse 6 it says let no man deceive you with vain words because up for because of these things cometh the wrath of god upon the children of disobedience because of what things because of the uh, all mongering because of adultery because of fornication and because of uncleanness and because of covetousness which is idolatry and it says because of these things cometh the wrath of god upon the children of disobedience be not cheap therefore partakers with them who will not be with them will not act like them you know sometimes when you find people they say I'm, I'm born again i'm a child of god as you probe into you know their pattern of life their practice in life and everything they do in life you see that money is a central thing in their lives that's idolatry i pray that god will deliver us from that in jesus name it tells us that no among us, none of those people have any inheritance in the kingdom of god the inheritance he has given us is the inheritance for the priests of the lord for the king and then it says these priestly inheritance we have because we're in fellowship together in the family of god we're looking at colossians chapter 1 colossians chapter 1 verse 12 giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light the people who are remaining the light they are born again the children of god he has given us the privilege that we will be partakers of that inheritance of the saints i come to point number two now in point number two praying for our purchased inheritance praying for our purchased inheritance an inheritance has been given to us and this inheritance is actually uh, something that we possess by faith and we have to pray and we pray by faith and it tells us in the word of god pray without telling me tell me now pray without pray without say everything together again again now talk without season is that in the bible sing without season is that in the bible tell me sing without season what's in the bible but you know as we look at our church we love singing more than praying 
and men ought always to pray and not to faint and if the lord jesus christ our savior our lord says that men ought always 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 to pray and not to faint why the criticism that we come here and then we start with prayer and then we're you know watching the time and say when is this going to take place when is that going to take place and we say what are you well, following the bible it says pray without ceasing it also say eat without ceasing sleep without ceasing all the other things will substitute for prayer it doesn't say do this without ceasing it says there's one thing that you do without ceasing and then after we pray for about five minutes or ten minutes there are people here and here and there that are giving us signals that's enough that's enough that's enough how are we going to be strong how do you get filled with the holy ghost how do you have conviction how do you soak in and sink in everything that you have got and then there's some groups of people standing and then monitoring and there are people that are kind of manipulating so that we'll stop that they want to hinder us from following the word of god and we're saying let's come back to the bible and it says pray without ceasing and in all the other things we're putting emphasis on these are ministers and this is a conference a congress for ministers and we're saying here is the word of the lord let us understand that if we're going to actually succeed in the work of the lord look it says a field is white for others but the laborers are few and then it says what pray pray for what pray to the lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the harvest field we're not doing that we're not doing that and yet we we'll say that the people are perishing the people are dying and then they need to get born again they're going to get born again they're ready for harvest but there's no prayer and the lord says all the weapon we need all the inheritance we need all the power we need all the resources we need they are available if we do what he has called us to do it is because this church the majority of us were not doing what the lord has told us to do and then when we pray we don't pray for laborers to be sent to the harvest field we don't pray for the things he's telling us to pray for we're praying for some personal things our brothers and sisters uh, our fellow countrymen they are dying in the in some parts of the country and dying prematurely all that does not concern us all that concern, concerns us is the headache we have is too much trouble we have all that concerns us is the skin a problem we have all that concerns us is the you know promotion a place of work and people are dying and the lord is saying we need to pray and when we come together like this in a congress like this after going through all that retreat messages and everything and we see how things are going down but even young people as we look at this country things are just going down did you read in the papers the other time that did they say about 20 percent or less than 20 percent of the people that you can you know um, exam to get out of secondary school only 20 percent passed uh, did, did you hear that all the things that are taken among the young people on the street and everywhere and the things terrible things did you hear that you know the you know political congresses uh, here and there and there as people went there they didn't know that we were going to die that day you know things eroded people are just dying did you hear about the bombs and all those and people are dying and then we come together here and the same prayer we prayed you know many years is the same prayer we're still praying today things are going to change and then with a serious mind and with a mind of the people that know that life is precious and eternity is at, is at stake then we come to the lord and we say lord things are going to change i forget about myself you forget how to say you forget about your choir and you forget about the entertainment and you say this is what the lord has said this is what he says to do pray without ceasing and we come together when we do that something is going to happen I said something is going to happen and the people will come to know the lord in jesus name that's what the lord is telling us he's saying that we need to pray and we're going to pray for the inheritance of the children of god we're looking at uh, hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 praying with faith and praying for our purchased inheritance here is what it says in chapter 11 verse 6 but without faith it's impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and 
and that he is a rewarder of them that how do they seek him tell me out loud diligently seek him that's how to pray but you know when we're praying and then we're looking at the time or we're praying and then we're signifying we're making signals to the person leading the prayer that's enough that's, that's no diligence that's no diligence if we're going to follow the bible let's follow the bible if we're going to expect an answer from the lord because it says this is what you do then you do that uh, you know sometimes uh, we have we have different uh, physical strength let's say for example a woman is pregnant and uh, she you know needs to sit down she doesn't you know st need to stand up everything we understand that but you know if that woman pregnant woman is standing up and then she's getting tired and because she's getting tired she feels that because she wants to stop praying everybody must stop and it's giving signal to the person leading the prayer that's enough that's enough that's not right if you are tired we understand if you are weak we understand you can just quietly go out because you are tired and because you are pregnant or maybe you have a you know you have an ulcer problem and because we understand that you have that ulcer problem and god will heal you in jesus name but while you're still having that problem the time is going you have not eaten this morning and something is biting you and say if i keep on standing like this i may fall down and you know it should be a kind of sin. what a terrible thing in this kind of congregation i was still praying and praying we understand that because of your ulcer you need to go and quit quickly get something and put in your stomach but instead of helping yourself that way you the thing you do is that everybody must stop because i want to stop praying and because i am tired and because of my ulcer i have to you know stop everybody see we have about 15 16 17 thousand people here and if we agree together as touching anything concerning this country the lord said he'll do it for us a single abraham only one person he said oh lord are you going to desert Sodom and gomorrah if you see 50 righteous people there and then the lord said i will not destroy them for the 50 sake that's the inheritance of the servants of the lord of the children of god now if we all here join our hearts and minds our faith together in fellowship and say lord this is what we're asking even if you go to you know you go to eat you go to drink water you go to the toilet out of maybe fifteen thousand people even if a hundred people quietly without disturbing anybody if you quietly go out because of the condition of your body god understands but not that 100 people instead of quietly going out will disturb everybody and stop everybody where is the future why don't you do the right thing when you are not able to bear our standing you're not able to bear our prayer why don't you just quietly go so that the rest of us and the rest of us will do it will take this country for the lord we're going to do it in jesus name now if there's a david that is coming up here to face goliath and eliab does not understand let eliab keep quiet Eliab, if you don't understand and david told you already is there not a cause and that was the final thing Eliab did not talk anymore he didn't keep on what if you know why the whole nation is facing goliath and nobody could stand and david came out and said i will take him on this goliath that is speaking against the almighty god i am going to destroy him because god gave me victory over the land over the bear and with my bare hand I, I i destroyed him i will overcome this uncircumcised goliath what if he came and that and said shut up don't do that again the stopping david he cannot do it and he's trying to hinder david who could do it don't do that if you cannot do it just go to the back of the hall and just if you need to lie down there lie down there ushers take care of them those people who are weak you, know, you need to go and drink water they are getting all their poor water okay pure water sorry <laughs> you're know, getting all their poor water and then you know all the with all the uh, sediments and everything they are taking just god bless you god bless you don't, don't worry about the, the rest of us who are here are you there yes. where are you will you pray yeah. i said you will pray yeah. i'm telling you this congregation of ministers we can determine the direction in which this country will go yeah. you know um i already gave a message people are asking me they say what is the message you have for the nation you know the journalists they're asking me every time and if they check up i already told them 
because I was invited to the presidential prayer breakfast and all the ministers and everybody in the whole, whole nation they invited them and I gave the paper in their hand and I told them the awesome responsibility of choosing our future I told them I said it's in our hand it can be done and I told them of the privilege of involvement and the peril of indifference and the power of influence and I told them give me a hundred people let those hundred people influence ten people just at a time that becomes one thousand let the one thousand influence and it's, it's, it's you don't have to carry arms you don't have to do anything let that ten one thousand influence ten other people one 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 influencing ten that's ten thousand and then the following month the third month influence ten 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 you're going to have a hundred thousand and then influence ten 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 that's a million i said by the six months you're going to influence a hundred million and i said what's the population of the country therefore all the first who are the power of influence positive influence and i brought the i'm bringing that message back to the church because if they are not listening over there the power the awesome responsibility of choosing the future of our nation I already told them i'm telling in england they asked me to prepare a message for them about how what can a nation change and I told them already, all those leaders, they came together, not deep alive. These are, you know, people in Great Britain. Can a nation be changed? I said, yes, a nation can be changed. And then I gave them the points again that this is the way this nation, UK, can be changed. We're telling them, and if they are not listening, and I'm telling you here, the opportunities are coming, and they're asking me, how can things change? How can this change? Now, if they're calling me over there, how can our nation change? If they're calling me over there, what is the possibility of turning around this nation? And I'm telling them, and then if we come over here, everything I've told them outside here, outside there, and if we come together and we pray, something will happen. Yeah. When you combine preaching with prayer, prayer and preaching, not entertainment, not singing, preaching and prayer, and we come to the Lord and we're united together, we can stop all the killing in this country. We can stop all the political upheavals in this country. It's going to be done in Jesus' name. Uh, that's the reason that's the reason we're with passion we're coming together and we're saying it's not just evangelism it's not just what we're doing evangelism but the people are killing themselves we're doing evangelism there's coffee there there's coffee there we're doing evangelism and some of the parts of this country as i'm saying they cannot have bible study because there's coffee and with all those things that's why we need to come together and understand the lord has put the instrument in our hand and he has put the instrument in our hand we're going to turn everything around in jesus Jesus name are looking at this and say but without faith it's impossible to please him because he that cometh to God he must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of them that how did they seek him diligently seek him we're going to do that from this morning and the Lord is going to answer our prayers in Jesus name I'm reading chapter 9 of Hebrews Hebrews chapter 9 Hebrews chapter 9 and I'm reading from verse 12 Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12 neither by the blood of goats and cows but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place and then he says uh, having obtained eternal redemption for us he has obtained eternal redemption for us that thing has obtained for us we'll get it in jesus name and then in verse 13 for if the blood of bulls and of goats uh, and the ashes of an elephant sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal uh, spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead walls to serve the living God for and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the red redemption of the transgressions that were under the false testament they which are called might receive the promise of the promise of 
eternal inheritance. We can receive that promise. Without we receive the promise, we receive it by faith. Look at chapter 10 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 20. It says, By near one living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having an high and high priest over the house of god let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith is by faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise that inheritance will be ours is the inheritance of the people of god the inheritance of the saints and as you make yourself according to the word of god washed in the blood of the lamb and it cleanses and purges and purifies you and you come saints in the sight of the lord those inheritance will definitely be yours we're looking at some acts of the apostles chapter 26 acts chapter 26 reading from verse 18 to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are which are what sanctified by faith that is in me now we're talking about pursuing we're going to pursue i say we're going to pursue you know, some people don't pursue anything in life they're just so so christians so so ministers no passion no vision no drive not getting anything but we are going to pursue with passion in jesus name pursuing the promised inheritance what's the promised inheritance look at psalm 2 verse 8 the promised inheritance some two we're looking at verse eight pursuing our promised inheritance without fainting some two verse eight in some two verse eight it says ask of me and i will give thee the heathen the pagans the sinners the unconverted the unbelievers ask of me and i shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession it says the greatest inheritance they can give the lord jesus christ and then that he can give to the body of christ because we are part of him it says is the inheritance of the heathen that is their souls getting them out of sin getting them out of evil getting them out of their own belief and getting them to the lord to become children of god and followers of the lord jesus christ but he said ask of me if we're not asking he will not give us ye have not because he has not and ye ask and receive not because he has a means that he may consume it upon your laws but if we ask and write he says ask of me and i will give you the pagans the heathens the unbelievers the sinners the people of the world and i will give you i will give them to you for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession will have them in jesus name now if god wants to give us the heathen but then we'll say he's giving us the heathen and we'll say brother go there i'm sorry i cannot go my children are still young i will say uh, brother please uh, go there because brother says not going his uh, children are too young he says sir i cannot go because i'm not married yet and if i go there i don't know anybody the people i know and when they don't see me out of sight it's out of mind when they don't see me how will they see the will of god to me i cannot go i will say okay brother can you go i'm just about to get promotion in my place of work and this is just my chance if i go now how do i get promotion i was okay brother uh, can you go uh, my mother is old and if my mother misses me now she will just die that will be the end and nobody is going because all of these excuses are there and the lord is saying when you ask me i'll give you the inheritance of the heathen i'll give you the inheritance and the pagans and all these people as an inheritance and nobody is willing to go and claim that inheritance now we're willing all our excuses are gone in jesus name 
That's the reason he's trained us. That's the reason he brought us together here so that the inheritance of the children of God and the inheritance of Christ and the inheritance of his church, he will give unto us. Ask of me and I will give you the heathen. I'll give you the beggars. I'll give you the sinners. I'll give you the unbelievers. I'll give you the people of the world you are saved. I'll give them to you to be saved as an inheritance. And But we have to pursue that. We're looking at Judges chapter 8 verse 4. Judges chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. Judges chapter 8, we're reading from verse 4. Here the word of God is making very clear. Judges chapter 8, verse 4. Please open your Bible. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him, faint yet pursuing them. Faint yet pursuing them tired yet pursuing them they kept on pursuing and we're going to pursue like that in jesus name we will not faint we have received the ministry we have received the calling we have received the challenge we have received the commission and because of that commission we have received we're not going to faint in second corinthians chapter four second corinthians chapter four reading from verse one therefore seen we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not we faint not we faint not you will not faint that's what the lord is telling us that because we have got a ministry and the lord has called us to get this done very quickly very fast before the people perish that's this we are giving ourselves totally unto the lord to say lord we're available we're going to do what you want us to do we'll pursue without fainting we're looking at proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 if you faint, then you have not got the power you ought to have gotten. Well, you just finished the retreat. Power for the present hour. And if you have got that power for the present hour, there will be no reason to faint. You'll be pursuing. Some 20, uh, sorry, Proverbs 24, verse 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou faint in the day of adversity because of the challenges that you think you have and then you are fainting and because of you know the condition and the situation of the place you are then you are fainting or because of the sight you see that's the sights i see because of that you are fainting it says it's not because the darkness sight are anything terrible anything you know to be afraid of it's because your strength is small your strength will increase today in jesus name it's telling us now how to get that strength and that you'll not faint you will run you'll pursue and you will walk you'll not faint look at isaiah chapter 40 isaiah chapter 40 reading from verse 28 has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the of the ends of the earth fainteth not fainteth not our god will never faint yeah, and it will never fail have you not heard have you not known that our god the creator of the heavens and the earth fainteth not and then neither you see weary neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth he giveth and he giveth and he giveth he giveth power to the faint this morning there's power waiting for you with your inheritance the lord will give it to you in jesus name he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength even the youth son shall faint and shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but everybody now wants you go But they that wait upon the Lord, tarry, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. How many people today are not baptized in the Holy Ghost? Don't raise up your hand. They've been there for a long time. They've been preaching. They've been, you know, helping. They've been pastoring. They've been shepherding. And they've been teaching Sunday scripture. They've been doing this and that. And they have attended how many retreats are, but they will not wait on the Lord. Hey, let's look up for a moment and let, let me let me make you help you to understand in our various uh, retreats my brother there my sister there uh, for five years now you have always been serving in the kitchen 
You didn't hear anything in the mess, any of the messages. You go to the retreat and then you are in the kitchen there and you're doing a great work, a wonderful work. The only problem is you're also a preacher. But you are not filled with the Holy Ghost. And you're, you're also a preacher and you're a minister of the Lord. But you're always in the kitchen for the last five years. And let's think about you now for all the all our retreats. You're always among, you know, the people in the security. And wonderful work, great work. But the point is, you're also a preacher. You're also a minister. And you're always, you know, doing this and this. And for a long time now, you have been working among the youth people, the youths. And, you know, go back to the hall. Go back to the hall of meeting. Go back to the tent of meeting and you have been you, you, it's good work somebody has to do that you've been do, doing that now for the past seven years any of those messages were preaching are you hearing and some of us there you have been in choir and then you practice early in the morning you practice late in the night you practice in the afternoon and you're very, you're very busy and it's a good work you are doing but when the messages are coming on you are sleeping because you are tired because your body is not steel or stone and the body will demand rest and because you are busy every time there's no time to pray you are not able to wait upon the Lord and then all the other things we didn't think about it all the all the good work we're doing in all those retreats and you don't have any time to really pray here is now you come to the Congress here you are not the one cooking now praise the Lord you are not the one doing ushering now praise the Lord and you're not the one doing anything now praise the Lord but we still have a challenge in our own headquarters church because all our people that are working in the at the retreat they're very busy at the retreat they're busy all through the year they're busy at the retreat at the Congress they are here again they are very busy and there's only one congress and once the congress is gone there's nowhere to listen to the message there's only one retreat once the retreat is gone there's nowhere no other place to listen to those messages and we're busy all the year round and you tell me that the church is getting weaker of course and you tell me that we're seeing things we're not seeing before of course that's just why the lord is saying at this time now when responsibility or duty will not tie you down i will not take the possibility of prayer and the uh, and the great things that the lord is going to do the inheritance nothing will take it away from you it says at this time now they that wait upon the lord this is the time to wait upon the lord and it says they shall mount up with wings as eagles and it says they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and they shall not faint over here we try to you know adjust this but there are people that they don't understand where we're trying to think for them and we're planning for them we we'll say if you were in the kitchen last year don't be in the kitchen this year again if you are doing this let's have a, a group group the people group a group b group c group d so that a group a is working at the retreat now next time group a will not work again they don't want that they want to be there all the time all the time all the time and it takes the message and the life and the power away from you and the things we just do is to they remove him from i'm going to be there by all means why do you why do you want to destroy your life why don't you want to have time so that you can wait upon the lord that's why as we come here to this congress we're not going to you know continue the same thing when are you going to have the power it is now i said it is now that anointing when are you going to really manifest it you know it is yes i said it's passed on to you you know from before the birth of, of something the angel told the mother it shall be filled with the holy spirit it from from his mother's home the holy ghost will come upon that's the anointing but then there came a particular time and the spirit began to move him yes the anointing is over you i said the anointing is over you but if you don't pray to actualize it if you don't pray to activate it if you don't pray so that that anointing and spirit of god will begin to move you like you move something how will you achieve what you ought to achieve but the time has come that they that wait upon the lord shall do what they shall renew their strength you will renew your strength you will wait upon the lord and while we're praying and waiting upon the lord if you are tired just quietly without disturbing anybody and if you want to stop praying without a giving signal to the person leading the prayer stop 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 we don't want to do that you want us to be strengthened don't you and you want us to have the power of god don't you i want us to march on you don't want the level of everybody to come to your level if everybody in this church 
church will be like you that don't want to pray how do you think the church will be for the sake of the souls that are perishing when you don't when you want to stop your prayer just stop and just sit down quietly without disturbing anybody so that the rest of all the thousands of us will, will knock at the gate of heaven and then the gates of heaven the doors of heaven and the windows of heaven will open to us in jesus name and we tell the lord we are taking this nation for the lord we tell the lord we are taking this continent for the lord and all the resources we need all the power we need the lord is going to give unto us in jesus name our ushers you are here to help us our security you are here to help us that's why we're together it's not good for an usher to forget that is to be a helper not a hinderer it's not good for any worker to to forget that you are to be a helper and not a hinderer and not somebody hindering us you know because of what you're doing then you are the back over there and then you are waving to us stop 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 hey you are to help us you're not helping us by stopping our prayer you're not helping us by stopping our preaching you're not helping us by stopping our corrections you will help us in jesus name so that all the members all the ministers everywhere as the whole church is moving forward to get our inheritance we're going to have it in jesus name and god has sent help us here i pay you'll be one of them i said you'll be one of them i want you to look at first chronicles chapter 12 first chronicles chapter 12 help us help us everybody shout help us First chronicles chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 in verse 1 now these are they that came to david in ziklag while he yet kept himself close because of saul the son of kish and they were among the mighty men tell me the last part there help us of the war david had help us i need help us david had help us our overseers need help us david had help us our preachers need help us david had help us and the people who are standing in the forefront of the battlefield we need help us we don't need people to hinder us look at verse 2 it says in verse 2 they were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in hauling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow even Saul's brethren of Benjamin, even the people on the side of Saul, when they saw that the Spirit of God and the calling of God was abiding upon David, they switched away from the side of Saul and they came to David to become helpers. You'll do like that in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8 and the sister of the guardians, they have separated themselves unto David in the hold to the wilderness men of might and men of war feet for the battle that could handle shield and buckler whose faces were like the faces of liars and they were as sweet as the rose upon the upon the mountains those were the helpers that came look at i'm looking at verse 15 now and it says these are they that went over over jordan in the first month when it had overflown all this and they put to flight all them of the valleys both toward the east and toward the west and there came of the children of benjamin and of judah to the hold unto david look at verse 17 and david went out to meet them and he answered and said unto them if ye become peace peaceably unto me to help me if you are come peaceably to me to help me there's a battle to fight and there's a work of god to do and there is the glory of god to defend and there is the faith to honestly contend for this faith that have been delivered unto the saints and david went to them and said if you come peaceably unto me to help me my heart shall be need unto you but if you become to betray me to mine enemies seeing there is no wrong in mine hand the lord of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it then the spirit came upon amasai who was the chief captain and he said thine we are david and on thy side thou son of jesse peace peace be unto thee peace be to thy helpers peace will be to our helpers for thy god helpeth thee 
for thy God helpeth thee. God is going to help us and you are going to help the ministry and we are going to join our minds and everything we've got together and with your help and with the help of everybody all the inheritance the Lord wants to give us in our church and possess this nation and possess that nation and possess every nation we're going to have it in Jesus name. Verse 22 and for at that time the, at that time day by day day by day there came to david to help him day by day there came to david to help him help us help us help us not the people who are going to slow us down not the people who are going to you know quench the fire of the spirit it says day by day there came to david to help him until it was a great host like the host of god i pray you'll be part of this in jesus name. look at verse 29 and the children benjamin the kindred of Saul, 3,000, for he that too, the greatest part of them, had kept the watch of the house of Saul. He that too, before this time, before all these helpers started coming, started coming, they just stayed on the, in the camp of Saul. Even though Saul was dead, they were still staying in the camp of Saul. But this time now it says, these thousands of them, they came to help David. It says in verse 31, and of the half of the tribe of Manasseh, 18,000 which were expressed by name to come to make David king and then it says in verse 32 and of the children of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the times understanding of the times as they look at the condition in which the country is today in which the continent is today in which the whole world is today you have the understanding of the times in which we are living and it says men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do the people that have re-insight knowledge the people that have some secret knowledge and the people that have some insight into what can be done it says they came unto david he said these were the people that had understanding of the times that knew what israel ought to do the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command everybody they just remained like that willing to help you are going to be one of them I said you are going to be one of them. Look at verse 33 of Zebulon. Such as went forth to battle, expert in war. With all instruments of war, 50,000 that could keep rank. They were not of double heart. They were not of double heart. They were not of double heart. You will not be of double heart. The same focus, the same intention, the same attention, and the same consecration, the same dedication. That we're going to join hands and hearts together, and we're going to do the work the Lord has called us to do. You'll be a helper. I said you'll be a helper. All our ushers will be helpers. All our security will be helpers. And all our singers will be helpers. Did I hear you say amen? amen. All men and women will be helpers. All our youth, all our adults, everybody will be helpers in the work of the Lord. And then they that wait upon the Lord will renew our strength. We're going to renew our strength. This morning, we're going to pray. This morning, we're going to pray. I'm going to even do it deliberately now because, you know, sometimes if you, if you preach the word and we don't have a way of checking up whether we agree or not, we're going to check up because we're going to extend our prayer a little because it says pray. Pray, but it says each once in a while. Praise the Lord. So we're going to do what the Lord has commanded, and we're going to see those who want to help us, those who want to have the power of the Lord come down. Why don't you rise up? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they that wait upon the lord upon the lord shall renew their strength and it tells us there that they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and they shall not faint open your mouth and talk to the lord we need the inheritance the inheritance the unbelievers ask of me and i will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for your possession we're going to pray at the mini congress when you hear this message you give time to pray help us help us in praying help us in seeking the face of the lord 
not of double heart, not of double mind, your heart, your life, lay everything on the altar. We have an inheritance. The priestly inheritance, those who are born again, those who are children of God. He has made us kings and priests unto the Lord our God. We remain in unity, in faith, in fellowship, in the family of God. And the priestly inheritance has given us as servants of God, as ministers of God, like He chose the Levites. Like he chose the priests, the old covenant. We soul winners, we workers, we leaders, we ministers, we preachers, we overseers, were the Levites of this time in the new covenant. And the Lord says, I am your inheritance. The Lord is my portion forever. Have a heart to help. Have a mind to help. Let's move forward. In prayer. Praying without ceasing. May not always to pray. And not to faint. So dying, we need to pray. Multitudes are going to the untimely graves. We need to pray. The ground seems hard in a number of places. We need to pray. Apostasy is coming in to many of the denominations. We need to pray. And rescue the perishing. Pray without ceasing. Will you stand like a priest of the Lord? The inheritance of the saints available for you. The experience of those who know the Lord. Available for you. But we are to pray. Clean life. Righteous life. Holy life. Pure life. Available for you. But you have to pray. And pray without fainting. And pray without ceasing. When we say we need another Elijah today, in your local government, in your area, another Elijah today in your region, another Elijah today in your stage, it comes to prayer. Men, women, members, church people, ministers, ought always to pray and not to faint and not to get tired. The Lord wants us to claim the inheritance of sanctification, inheritance of holiness. Inheritance of a pure heart. That's what he promised. That's what he said he was going to do. For it is time to seek the Lord. Until he comes. And raise righteousness upon us. 
watch an inheritance of righteousness of holiness purity of heart of transformation inheritance 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 of sanctification inheritance of holiness blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God Tarry, tarry, tarry. Which where you are until ye be endured with power from on high. The power of the Holy Ghost does not come unto the people that are hurrying away and hurrying away. Which until ye be endured with power from on high. And the church came together and they waited and they waited and they waited and they waited and they prayed and it was when they prayed like that praying with faith praying in unity praying in fellowship praying without fainting praying without giving up it was then the power came in the early church they waited they prayed they saw the face of the lord for it is time to seek the lord it is time to seek the lord until he comes and he raises righteousness upon us let no man deceive you for this reason cometh the wrath of god on the children of disobedience the lord is asking for your help the lord is asking for your support the lord is asking that you bring everything you've got and come and help this mission this commission this work this project of preaching the gospel to every creature salvation is your inheritance possess it sanctification is your inheritance possess it holy ghost power holy ghost anointing holy ghost revelation Holy Ghost gifts. The Holy Spirit is your inheritance. Receiving zeal, fire, power, single mindedness, focus. That's your inheritance. Receive that too. Pour that lukewarm water away. Be on fire for the Lord. Be on fire for the Lord. Ask of me. And I will give you the heathen for your inheritance. And that you must part of the earth for thy possession. <laughs>